Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Everyday Black History. I'd like to welcome you all as I usually do because here on Everyday Black History we highlight all um, people of the African diaspora, black Americans, uh, Latinos of African descent, uh, Africans, all are, are honored here and highlighted here for their significant achievements in black history and black culture, but not just black history and black culture, also history and culture as a whole. And now today on Everyday Black History, we're going to be highlighting a woman by the name of Valerie Thomas. And Valerie Thomas is a, uh, an, a scientist, an inventor, and she even, in, she even invented and received the patent for the illusion transmitter, which is an invention that uh, NASA still uses to this day. She received the patent for this invention in 1980. Now we're going to do a little bit of background information on her. She was born in 1943 in Maryland, um, and she was interested in science as a child. It started when she was young, and it started after she observed her father just tinkering around with the television, um, the television set, and seeing the mechanical parts inside the TV. It kind of sparked the interest on how things worked. And at the age of eight, she read a book by, that was entitled The Boy's First Book, on electronics, which sparked her interest in a career in science, you know, and uh, even though her father would not help her with the projects um, that were in the book that she would try to emulate, um, uh, despite his own interest in electronics, um, she still continued to pursue um, the, 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 the knowledge in, in, in science and, and, and how, you know, and how to tinker with things. She, she still had this interest. And she was, an, she was never encouraged by anyone to pursue science and mathematics, even at the school that she went to. She went to an all-girls school, and even then she was not encouraged to pursue science or mathematics courses. But she did manage to take a physics course. And she excelled well in these, in these classes that everyone was telling her not to take. She would go on to attend Morgan State University, where she was one of only two women that were majoring in physics. So this goes to show you how, especially during this time, women women weren't encouraged to, to to take up math and science. You know, I mean, her father didn't encourage her. Neither did the teachers and guidance counselors in schools. And even when she got to college, she was only one of two women to be in a class of physics that dealt with science. But despite all that, she excelled in mathematics and science courses at Morgan State University and went on to work for NASA after she graduated from Morgan State, which is also in HBCU, I might add, one of the best. Now, in 1964, she began working for NASA as a data analyst, and she, she developed real-time computer data systems to support satellite operation control centers between the years of 1964 and 1970, and she even oversaw the creation of the Landstat program, where she became an international expert on Landstat data products. Um, by, uh, by 1974, she headed a team of... Uh, of uh, 50 people for a uh, for the Lacey project and Lacey is, it stands for a large area crop inventory experiment and that was a joint effort with uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration the NOAA and the US Department of Agriculture now uh, Lacey this project demonstrated the feasibility of using space technology to automate the process of predicting wheat yield on a worldwide basis um, now, the idea for her invention came about in 1976 when she attended an exhibition that included an illusion of a light bulb that was lit, even though it had been removed from its socket. The illusion, which involved another light bulb and, and concave mirrors, inspired her. You know, it got her thinking, and she and curious on how light and concave mirrors can be used in her work at NASA. She began her research the next year in 1977. And it involved creating an experiment in which she observed how the position of a concave mirror would affect the real object that it reflected. And using this technology, she invented the illusion transmitter, the illusion transmitter, which was awarded to her October 21st, 1980, um, and is a device that NASA still uses to this day. By 1985. She was uh, the uh, manager uh, responsible. She was uh, the manager at a computer facility 
that was responsible for a major consolidation. The computer facility was the NASA Space Science Data Coordinator Archive. And uh, she managed this facility and she was responsible for a major consolidation and reconfiguration of two previously independent computer facilities and infuse it with new technology. She then served um, at, on the SPAN project, SPAN standing for Space Physics Analysis Network, and she was the project manager from 86 to 90, from 1986 to 1990, during a period in which SPAN underwent a major reconfiguration and grew from a scientific network with about 100 computer nodes to one um, that connected about 2,700 computer nodes worldwide. Um, by 1990, she became a major part. Um, about by 1990, SPAN, which she was the project manager for, became a major part of NASA's science networking and of today's internet. Um, so, you know, she participated in that as well. She also participated in projects related to Haley's Comet, ozone research, satellite technology, and the Voyager spacecraft. By 1995, she retired from NASA, and the positions that she held were Associate Chief of NASA's Space Science Data Operations Office, Manager of the NASA Automated Systems Incident Response Capability, and she also served as Chair of the Space Science Data, Operation, Data Operations Office Education Committee. So all that within over a 30-year period, you know, she was able to accomplish and be a part of while working for NASA. Even after she retired, um, even post-retirement, she serves as an associate at the University of Maryland, uh, Baltimore County Center for Multi-Core Hybrid Productivity Research. And she continued to serve as a mentor for the youth through the Science, Mathematics, Aerospace Research and Technology and National Technical Association. And no doubt for someone like her who wasn't encouraged to pursue math and science, it's important for her to, to encourage the youth, especially young women, to get involved in um, math and science, uh, the math and science and technology fields. So Valerie Thomas, we thank you for your contribution to black history and black culture and just history and culture as a whole, and we salute you. And that concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. As I mentioned, we have the podcast, Everyday Black History, which you can find on Apple Podcasts or Google or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're also on YouTube, uh, we're Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. So check us out. You know, it's all about black history. It's all about black culture. And we thank you all for the support. So stay tuned for the next episode.